So I had the opportunity to have a conversation the other day with a chaplain from the Cook County Correctional Center in, in Illinois. And, and, and I'll tell you what, this, this chaplain, she's awesome. She's doing incredible things for staff. And I hope that, that people emulate what she's doing all over the United States because we need it. Staff need spiritual guidance. Staff need somebody there that's specifically for them to help them navigate all of the craziness that we see on a daily basis. So kind of the purpose of our conversation was to help her kind of give her a little bit of feedback on a presentation that she's working on to show like big shots, jail administrators and and other members of the upper echelon that that dress a little bit nicer than me and and and, and shave their face, right? So the, the the thing that she was working on and one of my feedback on she is kind of broken down into segments, into sections the differences between correctional officers and say sheriff's deputies, correctional officers and dispatch, correctional officers and courtroom deputies. And, and, and that kind of sparked a conversation because she had brought up the fact that there were officers that are working and officers are working all over the place, right? Doing video court because courtrooms have canceled because of COVID and shut down and people that are allowed to still say, stay safe, people that are allowed to still say, say, people that are allowed to still stay safe and stay away from other people are kind of still doing this video court thing, right? And we're, we're kind of doing it too. So one of the things she, she brought up and, and she talked about this massive kind of undertaking that Cook County has done to bring this video court to life, to reality. And, 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 and she was talking about how one of the officers there asked her to pray for them, which I think is amazing and awesome, uh, but because they were having uh, a tough time listening, uh, being exposed to some of the court cases. Some of the things that they were hearing was starting to to mess with them a little bit, right? And, and I totally agree. I totally understand this. And so she was asking me, we were talking about this, and she said, well, don't courtroom deputies still hear that kind of stuff too when they're standing there. So she's like, so what's the difference between a courtroom deputy, a sheriff's deputy standing in court, listening to you know the factual basis or the story or the arguments between the, the attorneys or the, 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 the testimonies? What's the difference? So I thought about it for a second and then I offered this feedback. I said, you know what? I think maybe the main difference is, you know, between them hearing it and between us hearing it is our relationship that we have with the incarcerated, right? The the relationship that we have with the individuals that were that are sitting in front of us that were that we're learning things about that maybe we didn't know. And maybe that kind of seems a little silly, but think about this. If you had to sit there and listen to these terrible things that somebody did to another person, right? One human being did to another person and you had to learn this and you had to listen to to the the the, the, the impact statements, the the victims, the testimonies, the lawyers, all of that. If you had to hear all of that and then serve that person breakfast and then keep that person safe and then knowing what you know about them and what they did to other people, watch them sit in a day room and play cards. Watch them interact with other individuals that incarcerated seemingly without a care in the world. Now, I know that they may have cares and I and I don't want anybody to be like, oh, they, you know, they people care about stuff. What I'm saying is for us, for an officer who who takes an oath to treat people with integrity, uh, with respect, to be professional at all times, there's certain things that we don't want to know. Certain things that maybe affect us just a little bit differently. And so if we have this individual that's inside, that's in our unit, and we're we're interacting with them, and we may know their charges. We may know, you know, that the guy is in there for murder, or that the chick is in there for child endangerment. But what we might not know is the specifics of that case. Because see, for like me, I don't I don't even watch the news. I don't watch the news because I don't want to know what these people have done. Because I have to interact with them, I have to engage with them, and and honestly, I don't really care because it's kind of depressing, right? But when you're in court. When you're sitting there, when you're making sure that people are safe, whether you're working inside the courtroom as a correctional officer or or you're sitting there listening to it over video visiting, you learn almost too much about that person, that individual that you now have to maintain this kind of relationship with, right? That's what it is, knowing what you know about them now. And I, and I can tell you one of the craziest things that has ever happened to me was kind of a similar deal. I, I, I took an individual down to court. And on the way to court, 
he made this kind of weird statement about, you know, forgetting to pay a cell phone payment and picking up some girl off the street or something. I, I, I don't know. It wasn't making any sense. And then I listened to what he was charged with. And then I listened to the factual basis. And it was a terrible, terrible thing that he did to another human being. And I'm like, oh, holy crap. Okay, well, it kind of changed the dynamics of of what was going on in my mind right there at that moment, right? And so then we had to walk him back to his cell, to his housing unit. And then he made some additional comments about being angry about some of the things that the attorney said. And then he was very explicit, very very detailed about why he thought that the attorney was wrong. He, he didn't deny what the attorney said. He just didn't like the order in which the things took place. And, and, and I've always carried that with me a little bit because it was kind of crazy to hear a human being from face to face, right? We're not talking watching Netflix. We're not talking about watching some documentary on A&E about some killer or whatever in his confession. We're talking about standing side by side, working with an individual who did terrible things to another individual and hearing that right in your face close enough and, and then carrying that with you. And if you don't have the, the, the proper kind of outlets and support system and, and, and you don't know that you have to kind of flush those things, purge those things, then they're going to build up. Then they're going to catch up to you. And, and, and you know, and I wrote my book, The Nothing That Never Happened, because of exact things like this, right? Because, uh, you know, hearing about what an inmate does, because talking to an inmate about what they do, because... Because, you know, even watching the news and then interacting with this person, you know, changes us. It erodes us emotionally over time. And, and that is a nothing, right? Because we don't write a report about it. The facility doesn't act any differently around these individuals because of what we know about them. And so these are like, these are like tiny little mental paper cuts. These are like little, little pieces of us that chip away that will never get back. And over time... If you don't know that that's happening to you, it's going to mess with you a little bit. And so we had a great discussion. We finished our discussion. And I just wanted to share that with you to let you know that that there are people out there advocating for correctional officers. And that they're, that they're and I just did a little video about this not too long ago about the, the pooping in the desert. Maybe you watched it. But be mindful that there are elements, dangers in this profession that will change you, kind of alter you. And, 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 and I've talked about this a lot, right? That you're, that you're trained to, that, that we're trained to change. And then that changes us because we don't know we're changing and yada, 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 yada. But I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that longer later in another video. But I just wanted to share this with you because if you are hearing stuff, if you are witnessed to stuff, and you are, if you work in this profession, you are witness to, you have experienced things that maybe aren't, uh, you know, the best that maybe, maybe, uh, changed your skewed your perception to reality a little bit and 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 my advice to you my hope to you is to reach out to somebody is to talk about it is to is to share your concerns your feelings on things even if you're pissed right even if the, you're mad at this guy and you can't vent right part of that issue is holding our feelings in not being able to express what we actually feel because we have a job to do and that's really freaking tough and so what what I would ask you to do Find those people at your place of business, at your work, at your facility that you can rely upon, that you can talk to, that you can trust. And then also have people outside of your building, outside of uniform, outside of this profession that you can share stuff with. Maybe that's a friend, maybe that's a priest, maybe that's a professional, therapist, counselor, whatever, um, a support group, uh, you know, and, and talk to them. Be able to get this off of your chest. You can't carry it around forever because eventually... Uh, it'll it'll change you. It'll it'll wear you down. It'll destroy you, and and that plays into a whole lot of other things that we encounter and that we deal with as correctional officers. So I won't bore you with that today. So if you guys are looking for somebody to talk to or or reach out to, and you maybe don't know where to start, you can start with me. Send me an email, justcorrections at gmail.com. Put it in the comments below. I look at the comments. I I engage. You can go to Facebook, Just Corrections with William Young. Get on there, message me whatever. We'll talk back and forth. I'll help you find some resources if you need to find them. Uh, but I, I will say that if you don't have a, a peer support team, uh, you know, staff wellness office, those kind of things, and you don't feel comfortable reaching out to me, what I usually do when somebody does reach out to me is I reach out to the local police department in the area that that person is calling me from because they usually have 
something in place, connections with outside resources and counselors and therapists and psychiatrists that are used to working with people in this world, and they will help you point you in that direction. It may take you a little bit to to get them back on the phone. Some people don't like to answer right away or whatever, but give them a call or get a hold of me and I'll give them a call. All right, guys, if you like this video, if you found value in this video, go ahead and straight punch that little like icon and comment, share this content with anyone and everyone that you think may be interested. Uh, and if you're looking for my book, The Nothing That Never Happened, I'll put the link to that in the description below. All right, guys, that's all I got. Until next time, be smart, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk soon.